Hello everyone and welcome to week number two. Um, this week what we will be focusing on is medical asepsis, which is going to be dealing with chapter 42, pages 960 through 970, and page 1086 out of chapter 46. Now, because I said we're going to talk about asepsis and medical asepsis, I really want to start with chapter 46 first because that's really going to touch on the asepsis part of it. So chapter 46, um, page 1086, is really dealing with asepsis and getting an understanding of what that term means. Now, asepsis means it's the process or the conditions to which we are free or being free of diseases or contaminants. In order for us to maintain our safety and then the safety of others around us, um, we need to make sure and we need to consider all blood and bodily fluids as though they could be potentially infectious or carry bloodborne pathogens. Now I know that sounds a little funny and sometimes it's really hard to get an idea or an understanding of that, because of the fact that we're so used to thinking, oh, will people seem safe? In the medical world, we can't think that way. We have to think that everyone might be contagious or might carry something that could harm ourselves. So that being said, it's really important for us to follow the standard precautions that we talked about in week one, but we also need to make sure that you know, we're washing our hands and we're wearing the correct protective equipment. Now, while we're on the subject of hand washing, I want to inform you that this week in the lab, that's what we're going to be working with, is learning how to do a proper medical aseptic hand wash. Okay. I want to make sure that you are prepared for class this week, so please make sure that you review that procedure, and that can be found in Chapter 34. A medical aseptic hand wash is not like the hand wash that you're used to doing after you, know, you use the restroom or after you're cooking a meal. It's much different, so please make sure that you're prepared for class this week and you review that um, procedure. Now, Chapter 42, on the other hand, is really going to help you guys um, and set forth what we're going to work on next week when we start talking about surgical asepsis. Um, but I wanted to get you guys thinking about this process and at least start having a good knowledge of it and a good understanding of what the difference between medical and surgical asepsis is along with some of those surgical instruments that we're going to use um, in the field. It's important that you understand um, what surgical instruments are, but it's also important that you understand how we or what they were used for, what they were created for. And really, a surgical instrument was created and designed to help during operations or surgeries. Um, they're really there to serve a purpose. And they can meet certain needs or certain uses, um, such as cutting or dissecting, suturing, grasping or clamping, or dilating, probing or visualizing, so opening something up so we can see. So those are the, f the four main uses or types um, of instruments that you'll see in the field. It's important that you, as the medical, under medical assistant, understand how those tools are used and how to identify them. Now, one easy way that you can learn how to identify them is really knowing um, what their use is. Okay, is it used for cutting and dissecting? Is it used for probing? Is it used for visualizing? What do we use it for? But you can also identify the instrument by asking yourself some really easy questions, such as, what type of handles does it have? What type of tip does it have? What type of closure does it have? What type of edges does it have? How long is it? Now, that is one of the most important questions because if you can determine how long it is, you can determine where it's going to be used, either on the outside of the body or in a body cavity. And the last question is, what is it normally known as or what is it normally called? Okay. Those are all really great questions to ask yourself and to help yourself learn and better understand what those tools are used for. 
All right, guys, that's where I'm going to stop for the video this week. It is going to be uh, quite a bit shorter than all the other videos that I will do for you. Nothing too crazy this week. You do only have 11 pages to read, so please make sure that you're reading those fully before you come to class this week so you have a better understanding of what the material is. And because I don't go into full depth in these uh, videos, I want you to make sure that you understand all of the material of the chapter itself. Also, this week, you guys, um, we will start talking about your project um, and the due dates for your project and what your project really is going to entail. So please come to class ready, have a good conversation about that. Um, this is something where I will print off all the materials for you, so you guys do not have to worry about printing anything off of Angel this week. Um, I will do the same thing with any lab sheets that we will need. I will make sure those are printed off for you as well. Let's discuss uh, your homework assignment for this week just a little bit. So basically, your homework assignment is you creating an outline for a presentation that you would give to help teach um, other people or other employees on what an exposure control plan is. Um, you want to touch about, you know, how are they set up? What is the purpose of an exposure control plan? Now, you can create a presentation through PowerPoint um, and submit that for your work, and I, will and I will completely accept that this week. But if you actually want to create an outline what you'll have to do is you'll have to create that in a Word document and then submit it to me through the Dropbox. Please make sure, though, that you pull up the assignment on Angel because there are quite a few bullet point requirements that you need to make sure are in your assignment in order to get the full credit for that. So this is a pretty hefty assignment just because it has a lot of moving parts, but I know that you guys can do it, okay? Also, this week in lab, as I talked about a little bit earlier in the video, we will be performing that hand wash. So again, please make sure you're taking a look at Chapter 34 and knowing how to do the correct hand wash. But we'll also be talking about the different types of PPE or protective equipment, um, how you apply them, and then how you remove them in the correct manner and then in the correct order. Please don't forget you have one discussion post this week. Your initial discussion post is due on Tuesday by midnight, and two responses are due Saturday by midnight. And the last piece that I have for you guys in this video here is we will be having our first quiz this week. Your quiz is going to be over um, safety in the medical field. You, this quiz is an online quiz, but I want you to wait until after class to take your quiz, okay? The reason being is I like to do quiz reviews in class so you have a better understanding not only of the material on the quiz, but we can have good conversations and hopefully help it stick in your brain a little bit more. Your quiz does have a 30-minute time limit, and there is uh, 30 questions, which are made up of multiple choice and true-false questions. All right, guys, that is all I have for you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please either email me or bring them to class this week, and I will see you on Wednesday. Have a wonderful week, guys. Bye-bye.